everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is all about money saving tips as an equestrian. In the UK we're going through a little bit of a financial crisis. None of us can afford basic things, so you know we need those money saving tips and also we're heading into winter and that is arguably the most expensive time for horse ownership just because we're using a lot more bedding, we're getting through more feed, more hay, more haylage. There just seems to be a lot more running costs involved through the winter than through the summer when they're out in the field and they don't need too much maintenance. So without any further ado, let's get straight into the tip. Just quickly, I would like to say that these are my opinions, they're my tips. You don't have to like them, you don't have to do any of them. I just thought I'd share with you what I'm doing to save money and if you could share with me what you're doing to save money I would very much appreciate that. One of the biggest costs that we have is our horses bedding and for me I firmly arrived at the conclusion that wood pellets are by far the most cost effective option for me and they're my favourite thing to use because they're just so absorbent and they leave the stable so nice and clean. So I really like wood pellets. I think what's so good about them is not only do they last a really long time, but when you're mucking out, you don't take hardly any bedding with you, apart from obviously the bits that absorbed the urine, but even that, it really absorbs well and it compacts it. I'm getting very passionate about horse wheat. So you're really not removing much bedding, whereas I found with shavings and with straw, because it's not actually that absorbent, the whole floor was just getting soaking wet and needed to be taken out. So not only are you saving money because you're wasting less bedding, if you're like me and you have to pay for your muck heap to be removed, you're saving money there because you're not filling up your muck heap as quickly because you're hardly getting rid of any bedding. So it's a huge cost saving in that respect. However, I do know that it isn't for everybody and some people do really well on shavings or straw or cardboard even. And I think just whatever works for you and your horses, it's very... um. It's a very individual thing, isn't it? I think probably straw is the cheapest bedding you can find. I just can't get to grips with it. I don't like it. Wood pellets are my number one. But I would definitely say, regardless of whatever bedding you're going to use, definitely shop around. So my usual supplier, who I was buying all of my bedding from last year, they were charging me £4.80 for a 15 kilogram bag last year, 2021. This year's prices for the same bag was £8.50, so it had over doubled in price and I just desperately didn't want to have to swallow that cost because for me that is a huge expenditure. So I was desperately searching for other suppliers and I was having a little scour on Facebook, which is the most useful thing sometimes. And in one of the horsey groups there was a lady selling these, they're 20 kilogram bags for £5 a bag. The only catch was I had to buy a bulk order. She was selling them in pallets of 50. So I went and bought two pallets off her. Hello Otis, welcome. I went and bought two pallets off her and that will now see me right through the winter, possibly even into next winter because I don't think I will use all of them. But at that price, I just thought I'd rather have too many than not enough. So not only are they roughly the same price as I was paying last year, there's also five kilogram more product in the bags. So for me, that is a win-win and I'm very proud of myself. So as I said, just shop around, try and find the best deal that you can. Sometimes it's worth going through a little bit of inconvenience to save quite a large amount of money. What a dreary day. My next tip is something that I am quite passionate about. So let's turn the lights on. If I start ranting and raving, good lights. If I start ranting and raving, just forgive me. So my next point is to stop wasting your money on these pointless supplements that promise you the world and they just don't deliver results because they don't do anything. I was so bitten by this one when I first had Billy and he quite quickly got his navicular diagnosis. I bought him this Maxivita Maxiflex, which promises healthy pain-free joints. Tell me how powder is going to make his joints feel better. It's, I can't believe I bought into this. There's also another one I was scammed by and that's Equitop Myoplast. And there's a good breakdown. I might link the Facebook post that I saw it on down below in the description bar because it's just so interesting to me and it's just this guy that's just straight talking, cutting through all the nonsense. Equitop Myoplast basically promises that it will help your horse 
builds muscle but they don't tell you what's in the product and essentially it turns out it's just spirulina coated in sugar and as we all know sugar is your horse's worst enemy it's not great for them and he says that if building muscle is your main focus you'd be much better off feeding linseed or even better than that the age-old classic feed your horse some oats and that will provide him with far more protein and amino acids than Equitop Myoblast. And those are just two that I've had run-ins with. I'm very much of the mindset that there's nothing better you can do for your horse than consistency, quality feed, and hard work. That's it, there's no magic ingredient. You can't just sprinkle turmeric on your horse and expect him to be a superstar. It doesn't work like that. There are no quick fixes. Good quality feed, enough of it, and a good exercise program. That's all we need. It doesn't need to be this complicated or this expensive. I don't know if you can hear me over the rain, but I hope you can because I feel like we're getting somewhere. Um, most feed companies these days have a team of nutritionists. Hello Otis, again. Um, and you can phone them up at any point and ask them for advice and just check that your horse is getting all of his nutritional requirements. And it's just such a good service that we should all be taking advantage of. I've always fed Alan and Paige feeds, and for me, I just think my horses all look really good on it. It's an oil-based, low-starch, low-sugar, composite feed. It's got everything in it that the horse will need. McAllister does get micronized linseed as well, because he needs a little bit of extra um. But apart from that, it's literally a scoop, two, three scoops of this a day, and done. No fancy powders. Nothing that's going to cost £100 for a little teaspoon every day. So yes, speak to nutritionists. It's a free service. And just get your horse on a good quality feed. Feed him enough of it and give him enough exercise. Or her. Could be a her. Obviously, I am tarring all supplements with the same brush. There are some good ones out there. Just be mindful and, you know, exercise some common sense. I've just been sheltering in the tack room, waiting for the rain to stop, because I don't know if you could hear me over the last section, but I don't want to redo it, because I feel like I said what I said, so we'll deal with that when it comes to editing. But I want to move on to my next point, which is slightly controversial, and I don't expect many of you to agree with me on this point. We're gonna stand in Billy's stable, because it's very cold outside, very windy. So, my next tip is to pull your horse's shoes off and I know a lot of you won't like that and a few years ago I'd have been like oh you hippie weirdo no 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 but actually Billy you're still on my foot um but actually for me I think it's just the best thing not only is it much much cheaper because you're not paying a hundred pounds for your horse to be shod every six weeks you're paying maybe 40 30 40 pounds to get your horse's hooves trimmed every five six weeks so it's much much cheaper it's much more natural for them you all know by now on this channel i'm a huge advocate for horses being barefoot i just think if you can why wouldn't you because it's the most natural thing for them and actually putting shoes on them can sort of affect the way that the hoof performs and functions for example i was chatting with my friend the other day because i'm so much fun and i said oh do you actually know what the frog is for i didn't say it quite like that because i don't think i'd have too many friends left if i was one of those but we were just having a conversation i said do you know what the frog's for and she said no i don't actually which is fine because that's exactly how i was a year two years ago and i said well it's actually it's meant to hit the floor when your horse is moving because it then acts as like a the word i want to say button although that billy that's to open the door um, I want to say button but it's not button what word am I looking for maybe like a shock absorber or something so when your horse's foot lands on the ground when they're walking trotting cantering jumping whatever the frog is meant to hit the floor then it compresses and it boosts the blood flow back up the horse's leg and it's a crucial part of their circulation if the horse has shoes on their flop their flog, their frog doesn't really touch the floor. So that's just one of the benefits of having a horse barefoot. Their circulation isn't compromised in the way that it is when they have shoes on. So not only is it hugely beneficial to your horse's hoof health and leg health, it's also very beneficial to your bank account. My last, Billy, can we, Billy? Yes, silly boy. My last main point um, is to, 
I'm going to have to leave this table because you're not leaving me alone, Billy. So my last big point is a little bit out of the box, but it has the potential to save you so much money. And that is being confident and competent at giving your horse basic first aid. Things like bandaging a leg, poulticing a hoof, basic care of little scratches and scrapes. If you need to call a vet out every time your horse is looking a little bit lame or has a little cut on his leg, you're going to spend an awful lot of money on vet's fees and call out charges. Whereas actually, a lot of these things we can deal with ourselves at the yard. We just need a well-stocked first aid kit and a little bit of know-how. So if you're not confident and you don't necessarily know how to do certain first aid bits, ask people, look on YouTube, look on TikTok. It's all free, there's so much knowledge out there. Maybe next time you do have the vet out, ask them to show you. They will absolutely be more than happy to give you a little quick demo on how to bandage your leg properly or how to poultice a hoof properly. There's no harm in asking and actually it's the best thing for your horse if you can do things yourself because I've had occasions in the past, not with my current vets because they are brilliant, but I've had it in the past where you phoned them up and you've asked them to come out and look at your horse because he's lame and they haven't got any appointments for two, three, four days. If you can deal with it yourself at home, either completely or just until a vet can come out and see them, it's just a win-win, you know? So brush up on our education, stock our first aid kits very well, and that leads me nicely into my last little section, which is just little tips, easy swaps that we can make. So some really easy swaps you can make is using human products instead of horse products. Things like shampoo. There's no reason why our horses need special horse shampoo that costs like six, seven, eight pounds a tub when you can go to a supermarket and get their own brand shampoo for 50p. So human shampoo, not horse shampoo. The same goes with purple shampoo. Horse purple shampoo, why is it so expensive when you can go to the shop and get one that's designed for humans and it's a pound a bottle? So human shampoo, also using diluted Dettol as a hoof cleanser, hoof disinfectant, whereas normal hoof disinfectants are a few pounds. Things like Sudocreme instead of specific wound creams for horses. I think there's a lot of money that goes into marketing these special horse products at us, which tells us that horses need these really expensive, really over the top products that do these magical things. Actually, they're mammals, we're mammals. A lot of things are quite similar. So as long as you're not doing anything out of the ordinary with them, you can pretty much use human products on horses and it will work out cheaper. Another thing I always make sure to have in my first aid kit are nappies and I get them for very cheap money at the supermarket and I use them in place of vet wrap when I'm pulsing a hoof or if I feel when I'm bandaging it needs a bit of extra padding or sometimes I will use one as a poultice itself with a bit of iodine and sugar, sugar paste, sugar dean they call that and that itself acts as a homemade poultice. So, you know, nappies are a very good cost effective option. One thing that I am seeing a lot of at the moment are very expensive plush stable toys so that your horse can have a little horse teddy in his stable and he will have a lovely time through the winter. Just go to a charity shop and get your horse a teddy for a couple of pounds tied up with some baling twine. They'll love it just the same, trust me. My last little bonus tip is something that I'm definitely not doing this year. One thing that I'm not doing this winter is sending my horse's rugs off to be professionally cleaned. What I'm doing instead is just hanging them over a fence, letting the sunlight get to them, kill any bacteria, let the wind air the rugs out. Bob's your uncle, I've just saved probably 200 pounds not getting all my rugs cleaned. And you know what, they're horses, they're dirty, filthy animals. They don't care whether their rug smells like fairy non-bio or whether it smells like dirt because give them two hours of wearing it and it's going to be covered in poo anyway. So it's not necessary to get our horse's rugs cleaned every year. I think I've definitely rambled on for long enough so I will love you and leave you and I hope you found this video somewhat useful. Let me know what your money saving tips are down in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of mine, if you agree with them, if you disagree with them. Let's, let's have a chat. Let's see how we're all saving money this winter.